Spooky Took. Welcome back to the Ryan Sullivan Show, episode 87. I don't need to say podcast anymore. It's not really a podcast. It's a live stream. I tried doing one of these the other night, and then my uh, my computes just bounced from the internet. Best or not? Best or not? Did you watch the documentary about Burt's Bees? It's heartbreaking. I don't remember it fully, but uh, yeah, Bert, old Bert there, he got owned by the company. He's just a sweet old man. He's just harvesting bees, not harvesting bees, but harvesting honey. But there was something about like the contract that he signed with like Johnson and Johnson or something. I don't know. I don't have all the information. I forget. Uh, back in my drinking days, that's what that's a low key benefit of stopping drinking is like. I watched a lot of movies hammered, so so uh, I don't really remember, and it's kind of fun to um, revisit. Now, worth it? No, not worth it. I wouldn't recommend destroying your life with alcohol just so that you can rewatch movies for the first time. It is a technique, though. The Irish, it's an old Irish technique. Oh, I'd like to erase me memory. Oh, to watch the War of the Buttons for the first time again. Well, destroy your life with booze and everything will be new again. Uh, I'm exaggerating, of course. But, yes, welcome back to, this will be episode 87. As you may or may not know, I don't need the spooky toque anymore. We have our intro. Wait for the thumbnail. How's the camera? I need to, I'm going to... I'm going to buy doper shit, but uh, I don't really need to, um, because the episode 80 set, this episode is an episode 86 sounded pretty fine. Um, but it would be nice to get a slightly better webcam and then also, uh, a better mic so that it's like HD. I can do some ASMR. I can do some snack reviews. Someone had asked, like, are you going to do garbage night on these on live? I, I could have, but you won't see. Like, the window, the window for garbage night is right there. That's the window. But how you wouldn't, you would only see, like, me arse. You'd only see me arse, Captain. But I did just do garbage so, night. And there's wind. Treetops bristling. Here we go. You see the wind taker? She landed straight up though. I don't even have to go down. Unreal. Hello. And busted by the communist buddy. Over 30. Are you ready for your garbage? So the dude that lives downstairs is the most shy person I have ever known. His name is Benoit. Very Quebecois. Um, English, very bad. And people skills, very bad. Shouts out to Benoit. Want to be your friend, man. Want to play tennis. I've asked you a bunch of times. He's got a tennis figure. It's not that he's like Rippy McJackerson in shape. But like, you know, when you can just tell when someone might be good at something. And I think like one time I saw like a racket hanging out of his backpack. And I was like, oh, I bet you Benoit can can hang on a tennis court. Um, but the missus has moved in. I'm pretty lucky. I live in a block of six and, uh, everyone's like pretty good. Everyone's a pretty good person. TBQH. And I'm in the middle. Sarah's upstairs and Benoit is underneath. But, uh, that was the missus. Benoit, Benoit's Bay. Going to her, I said communist, but because I call the communitos, I call them communist automobiles, and so that's why you hear that in the video. Because I started saying communist automobile, but but then I just like stopped myself, but it was too late because I already said communist, and she can totally hear me. She's probably downstairs right now, like, hey, Benoit. The dude upstairs poked his head out the window and called me a communist. <laughs> hey, 
Tu connais le gars qui, qui habite en haut? Ouais, il a comme ouvré la fenêtre puis il a m'appelé un communiste. And he would be like, what? No. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because from her perspective, that's exactly what happened. She was going to get something from the car. It's like, oh, my Bert's bees. Be, you know, Benoit was like, let's make out, babe. And she was like, un momento, por favor. Or in French, it would be like, une minute. <laughs> and she goes out to her communito, which is a, like a car sharing service. It's pretty, I don't know how many places it is in Canada, but <clears throat> uh, there she is, pops out of the, the ground floor unit to the car and just hears a guy upstairs say, communist. I'll say hello and then say communist. <laughs> We gotta run that back. You see the wind taker? She landed straight up though. I don't even have to go down. Unreal. Hello. And busted by the communist buddy. So she heard a hello and busted by the communist. <laughs> Dude, outrageous. So uncalled for. You, and my Canadian, when I'm when I'm up to no good, the Canadian accent comes out, eh? The Albertan accent comes out when I'm when I'm up to no good. The Albertan, the, the Albertan comes out a little bit more. Thing about this stuff is like, it's never enough, is it? It's never enough. It just has that nice little tingle. But yeah, old Mr. Old Mr. Beeswax there. I don't know what to do. He signed some contract that like he had to be the poster boy for Bird's Bees, but it just ended up being like a really bad deal. And he just like, I don't know if he dies at the end or something, but if you just look up Burt's Bees documentary, the poor gaffer just kind of like was forced to be this mascot for the brand. Like his contract stipulated that he like travel all over the world doing to be the face of the, like, I don't know, something like he insisted on being the face of the brand, but he's just like not a bad bone in his body. He's not, he's not a, a, what do you call it? Like he's not in it for the glory or anything. He just like, he just like, it was, this was his like life for, I don't know, a generation or something like that. But there he is like in Japan, like after an 18 hour flight, just like can't walk. And he's like, come get your birds, bees. <laughs> It breaks, hits the deck. Not actually, but yeah, it's a sad documentary. I think I stopped. I forget, but I think I stopped buying Burt's Bees after because I was so bummed. Bummed on Burt's Bees. That would have been a better name for the documentary, if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, as you may or may not know, I'm now... Um, I'm now... Uh, well, the podcast was got to episode 85, and now episode 86 onward i was like why um because i don't listen to podcasts i know a lot of people do but i don't i sometimes watch podcasts so i was like um and i was also bored with re with recording podcasts and just being this audio only just sitting here in my bedroom at this table being like la 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 you know like babe the pig la 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 That is a scary ass movie, man. That movie does not age well. Me and my co me and my colleague Robin have well, we started doing this and then we just stopped, but like we were re-watching, not together. She's not into me. No, it's not like that. Uh, but we were like separately watching childhood movies, re-watching childhood movies. And Babe came up. And so that movie is dark, man. And the animatronics are like just 
also scary and it was made in the 90s so it's like definitely racist and sexist and classist and uh it's a bit weird it's a bit weird being like hmm this was pumped into my eyeballs when i was a kid and this was a good movie babe is one human murder because animals die in it dude but if babe had one human murder <laughs> in it if one human died in babe it would be a horror movie straight up it's just missing one death of one human it's weird. I felt awkward watching it. When they're anyway. So uh, yeah, and we did. What else do we do? Um, I forget. Whatever. So yeah, I was in Calgary last week, and that was dope. I got to see my family. I got to see a couple of friends, but I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm not like a big plan maker. I don't like to go home to calgary like i like to be at my parents crib just chilling at playing dominoes that's what we play well it's a variation of dominoes called runaway train and or mexican train but i don't we me and my siblings decided to like not call it that because we're like why is it what what about this is mexican it seemed kind of derogatory um so we call it runaway train and it's dope and it's a it's like a variation of domino so uh that's what i like that's like one of my happy places is like playing games board games card games whatever dominoes with my family and eating and just chilling but i did uh i did see a couple of friends i went on a, like a, a food tour on the friday like three days ago and that was dope. Um, all of which, of course, is on uh, TikTok. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. <coughs> I have a, had a cold. This is the longest cold I've ever had in my life. I feel fine. But the sinal and that cough you just heard. has been with me for about a month. Really annoying. Uh, but yeah, IG just sucks. Like, cause your IG friends suck. And I'm a shitty IG friend myself. We just like don't engage with our actual friends on IG. It's strange how Instagram is like more your network, obviously like people you somewhat know, unless, you know, of course, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course we all follow celebrities on IG and stuff, but the most, the most of majority of your audience or your followers and the content you see is people that you like somewhat know. Um, whereas TikTok, it's like random all the time. And uh, yeah, like, IG friends suck <laughs> and I'm part of, and I'm one too, you know, like we like watch each other shit. We see each other shit, but nobody like engages with it. You know, like I'll put stuff, I'll put stuff on TikTok versus IG. Cause like, I'll just dump shit on IG in case like, like for my mom or just like, so it's there. I don't look at the com i don't look at engagement i don't look at how many likes like i just throw it up there and move on like it's a dump site um in case like i don't know a brand is kind of looking or like cross-checking my my tiktok account or something um but yeah the um ig engagement just blows your friends you know what i'm saying and you post a masterpiece and it'll catch like 27 likes and you're like, oh, cool. Night. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I'll put the same thing on TikTok and go like 250K a mil. Done a Mildred on a few occasions, but yeah, your IG friends suck. Title of my book. <laughs> but I get it. I'm part of it, like I said. Anyway, it's funny how that works but yeah I'll, I'll just dump stuff on there so yeah the food recaps from calgary are on tiktok and had a good time doing that um 
but uh, yeah, my folks are good. And my two, I have two sisters, an older and a younger. And uh, we all vibed. My older sister didn't stay as long as I did. Um, she got a little squirrely. Well, no, she just didn't stay as long. Uh, um, and left on the Wednesday. I went Saturday to Saturday. She went Saturday to Wednesday. And she lives in Washington State with her wife. And they have like a rural, like kind of not totally self-sustaining, but I know that that's their, that's their dream is to have this like piece and they have, they do a lot of, so they grow their own veggies. They have, they, whatever, hatch their own eggs <laughs> um, for eggs, for chicken eggs. Uh, but yeah. And my younger sister is a G. You may or may not know two-time Olympian, master's in civil engineering, and is a consultant at McKinley, which is all just like ridiculous boss shit. And like, it's kind of just a different level. But uh, we're like, it's, it's not within our family, like we're not competitive, you know, like it's not this like, pissing contests like look at my car keys like type thing when we get together it's quite the opposite actually it's very wholesome and like like when we were kids just like joking around is pretty much what we do so uh yeah and i just before the left i left i did episode 86 because yeah i was like tired of just doing podcasts only and then um hopping on live i realized like i can do uh, why did I think that that was cool? Oh yeah. I don't have to, I don't have to store a video. Like I don't want to record an episode like with a big fancy camera and like edit it. Like I don't, uh, I don't want to do that. Like, um, I know bigger podcasts, like they have like a team of four people that like chop up the video and like make clips for social and stuff like that. And that's great. Maybe this will get there someday, but I genuinely just love to storytell. And so uh, this is just like a, an extension of that. So yeah, the, the podcast was on Spotify up until episode 85, but now we're going to do this here whenever I want. And there's other fun stuff on the go as well. Um, I hope. Yeah, there's something pretty cool on the way, but there's a an element to it that I I shan't talk about yet. That is a pretty funny. It's a it's a very strange issue to have. It's not really my issue either. It's with the production and uh, blah blah blah. I won't go into it yet because I don't want to talk for nothing and then have to backtrack. So. Uh, yeah, these episodes will be here and on live. Like I can just like rip. I can just dunk go live and like nobody's joining the live. I'm not. I'm not trying to have a live engage. Like I'm not trying to do like be like NPC. Like thank you for the roses. You know. Like I'm not. That's not what this is. This is just an easy way to record a podcast. That now, like the second I hit end stream, boom, it it lives on YouTube forever. And I can just like share the link to that wherever. So that's nice and easy. And, uh, and why not? Um, and why not do so um, was sort of what I was thinking. Cause that's sort of like, I guess in terms of like bringing the, like the most legitimate way to work towards like monetizing one's content is YouTube. Like that's the, best and certainly until um canada and tiktok canada like because creators don't get paid for anything um in a lot of countries in the us and in europe and in asia like when you have a big account like you get paid um for having big accounts like because they they run ads like after or before in the middle of your posts um, so yeah, like actually this afternoon, like I saw a dude, he's got a lot more than me, 
he's got like 400,000 followers, but he's this Brit living in Thailand. <laughs> and he just like talks about these like 7-Eleven and like these potions that he makes in the woods. But he was like, yeah, I make about five figures a month off TikTok revenue. I was like, holy shit. Gulp. Now, I never want to quit my job. I don't want, that's not what I'm looking for. I mean, I guess I am ideally, but like, I don't know to, cause you got to think about salary benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Like it would take a lot, but it would nice, it would be nice to line the pockies a little, you know, just a little pocky liner so that you can go and get a nice chemise from the magazine. You feel me? Uh, but it, yeah, who knows what's going to happen. But uh, for now, um, well, I know firsthand that like the consistency and it, it, it is how you build traction. There's a long time, like building the TikTok account was months and months. It was half a year of like zero engagement on jack shit. Like it was, uh, but I genuinely like to storytell. So, and whatever it is like jeans or sneakers or food or just like stuff that happens, um it makes me happy so yeah uh until tiktok canada kind of opens that up i don't know if that will ever happen you would think so but um why not start to build up some like an archive on youtube um so that you know you, know, you got to start somewhere you got to start somewhere and i was doing these i was doing the the podcast on spotify and just like putting it on Spotify, but like throwing it out there. And there's no, I don't know. I'd share the link on IG stories, but it was just like, meh, me scusi. And like, that's that. And you're like, okay. So anyways, uh, yeah, the trip to Calgary was dope and my family's good. And I, uh, I actually got up earlier when I was home in Calgary. Um, Cause my dad gets up at three 30 in the morning. My dad getting up late for my dad is 4:30. It's wild. But of course, like he also goes to bed at nine. And he also, I don't know, he's just super freaking maritime Catholic. You know, like he's just so Scotian. I feel like that's such a Scotian thing to do. Get up at four in the morning for no reason. For no reason. He's not fully retired, but he's been semi-retired for the last 10 years. And uh, and by semi-retired, I mean, like, virtually not working. But in his line of work, they like to keep the older guys around um, to as part of, like, a mentorship type effect within the structure. Uh, so they make it real comfortable, like, for them. And uh, But next year, he, he's full retire. Never go full retire. And, uh, and so, yeah, just gets up before, just cause I just feel like that's so Scotian. I'm sure other, I'm sure other people do that, but it's for sure. Like per capita, Scotians get up the earliest. I don't know. Google that. Probably Scotians though. Well, I guess not because BC gets the sun first, but time zones, time zones aside, so this week I'm just going to I'm just going to watch all the sports and go to the gym and eat food uh, because I am on vacation for two weeks, uh, but just did the one week in Calgary because a week with your folks is good, you know. A week with your folks is good. There was a time, I think it was last summer or the Christmas before that where I went home for nine nights. No, I went home for eight nights. And on the last two nights, I remember being like, this is one night too long. And then this is two nights too long. <laughs> not because of anything bad happening, but like I'm a big, big fan of not overstaying your welcome. You know, like you want to, you want to bounce when the, when it's good. Um, and I'm sure they would actually probably agree with that. That like, if I were to be like, if, you know, if, 
their phone rang and they're like, this is an un, this is an unsanctioned survey. Like when one of your children comes to visit, would you like for them to stay with you for six nights, seven nights, eight nights, press, you know, press button accordingly. They would probably say six or less, but also my, my, I don't know. I have a, I don't know if it's special, but like me and my parents vibe differently than when, like when my sisters are around, it's just more people, it's more chaos. And there's just, it's just more intense, but um, I'm kind of, I'm like a little bit more similar to my folks of like, when like, I don't need to talk. Like, I don't need, we don't need to be having a thrilling conversation for me to get something out of the relationship. Like, just being with each other like uh, um yeah in the evenings like yeah we'll play a game or like there's also a lot of time when we're just like we're just like sitting in the living room and just like not talking you know um yeah don't always like need words to like feel don't always need need but words is good what's that from the office why use many words when few words do trick? Freaking Kevin. Because need need for talk talk. Um, but yeah, it was a nice little little booster, you know, because work is going to be kind of a shit show. My team is uh, is going from me, the marketing department, to three people uh, between now and Christmas, which is fire for me. Good for my career and my profile and my LinkedIn and uh, getting to hire and blah, blah, blah. Um, also stressful, teaching people stuff and teaching two people stuff. And it's pretty technical what we do, but uh, yeah. So starting next Monday through Christmas is going to be kind of gnarly. It's going to be kind of gnarly. So yes, yeah, so this week, staycation. Chilling, watching sports, all those sports, and maxing out, maxing out as hard as I possibly can, and making videos and stuff like that. So that's pretty much what's up. Like I kind of, uh, I pretty much, uh, yeah, started doing this uh, YouTube podcast thing last week before winning Calgary, and then this is episode eighty-seven. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to, I'm not starting over because I'm keeping the Ryan Sullivan show as like the name of this because it is. Um, but I'm just, I'm now, I'm just going to say that this was because it was episode 87. And uh, yeah, I'll do like weeklies. Um, I used to do the Spotify podcast on Saturday mornings, but uh, for no particular reason. But also, this is more fun for me because, like, I'm a visual guy. Like I said, I don't listen to podcasts because I feel like it's it's just racket, you know? Another Scotian thing. Scotians like to use the word racket, and they like to get up at 4 in the morning. Uh, but, yeah, just having a podcast on is just kind of a racket. You know what I'm saying? It's like I have enough going on in my head. I don't need another voice or two chirping. Um Plus, it's also a very important way of how I learn things at work is by overhearing shit and picking up on nuance and subtleties. Uh, I like going to the office. Um, most of my most uh, my company is like we're 32 people, I think. Most people don't go to work. Um, but there's a little click of us that we're like five, including my boss, which would be the CRO, Chief Revenue Officer. Um, he's who I report to. And, uh, so that's kind of good that like someone in, in my hierarchy is there. Chill dude. His name's Fred. Um, of course, like, as I just said, the marketing department has just been me, uh, for like the last year and there was no marketing department before that. So I've had my work cut out for me, <laughs> this like tech company that's seven years old and has bad habits. A lot of success, don't get me wrong, but like a lot of bad habits too, because it's just been literally on the wall. There's a fucking slogan that says, do whatever it fucking takes. And like, that sounds really bro-y and cringe. Like it's not a toxic environment. 
it's a competitive environment, which I think is good. There's definitely been people come through that place that can't keep up and it kind of eats them alive. Uh, but it, it is a place, and I say this as I've been hiring recently, um, and I've been part of the recruitment process for the sales team as well, as I tell people, this place gives you an, an opportunity every day if you want to grow or if you want to cave. And that is most of the time a tremendous gift. Um, there's a lot of jobs out there that don't give you that opportunity to uh, strive for something more or like run and hide. Um, and, and, it's, and that's up to you. A lot of places, a lot of people go into work and don't have that kind of opportunity. It's just like, it's just plugging away and like filling a desk um, chipping away at the hours and counting down the clock until you can go home. And that's okay too. Um, could be worse, could be better for anyone. You know, per perspective is everything. But I'm grateful that I have a position where like I can decide and don't get me wrong, like that pressure has eaten my lunch a bunch of days many days, countless amounts of days, but most of them in the 80 plus percentile of days, I like that, uh, that opportunity to try and to have an impact. Um, so, I mean, that's all we can really ask for, right? Is to like, have an impact is to make any kind of difference, even if it's just holding the door for somebody. But if I stay home, I don't really like, I don't have an, I don't get much, I get less opportunities to be of use to the world around me. And I'm just grateful to participate in my life today. Uh, because that, that story thread goes into a whole other, sector of who I am and and what led me to to that uh call it just like place or peace of mind or whatever but yeah I'm grateful for the opportunity and so I say like that I'm that the next six weeks will be stressful yeah but also bring it on let's rip let's go <laughs> let's go um and uh yeah the the i we're going to, we'll get spiritual lyrical, you know, break out cunning linguists. We'll get some, you know, um, backpack rap playlist going on after this, but the gift is being able to, and it's not good or bad, but just being able to, the gift of life is just being able to good or bad is a perspective. It's a perception thing. Whether you think this is a challenge or this is easy or it's a gift or it's a blessing or it's a curse that's all perspective. The gift is being able. So I'm grateful to be able. <coughs> it sounds like the name of a, a nursery rhyme. Grateful to be able. Aunt Mabel. Uh, get your elbows off the table. Um, listen, we're going to cut her off there uh, for whenever you see this. Thanks for watching. And there's going to be more. And uh, episode 37, The Ryan Sullivan Show. Follow me on socials at Sullivan Ryan on TikTok and IG. And Twitter is Sullmaster7 as well as YouTube is Sullmaster7. And that's what's up. Peace. And.